Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Hopefully you're having a great day, then if not, then maybe this little video will cheer you up. So, today we're gonna talk about uh, three very important maps, and I'm gonna explain the difference of what they are, why we use them, and uh, where and normally why we should use them, right? So this is the bump map, the uh, normal map, and of course, the displacement map. These are three maps that we have inside of the 3D world that allows us to capture detail for our characters. So there's a couple of things that you need to do in order to generate this maps first, which is always a little bit uh, tricky. So ideally, what you want to do is you want to have a sculpt. I did this uh, face character well, several years ago, and the, I added this like just random rock details on his uh, side of the face so that we can appreciate how this maps work. And once you have a high poly sculpting, uh, you need to create something called a low poly. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bake down all of these details using maps, texture maps. And the three textures maps that we're going to be talking about today are the bump map, the normal map, and the uh, displacement map. So three main things you need to have for your character. First, clean topology. You need to have proper topology. This is going to help you with uh, the overall like preparation of your model. Your model has to have a let's call this the target level, the level where all of the maps are gonna be applied to. And then you also need to have, of course, the high poly level or the highest level where you're gonna be getting the information from, okay? Usually you're gonna have a low poly and a high poly, and we're gonna transfer the details from the high poly to the low poly using any of these three maps. Once you have your low poly, the second thing that you need to have is, of course, UVs. You need to have proper UVs. As you can see with this one right here, we have a something relatively clean. It's not the best UV, but it's it's it, it's gonna work. And uh, this is the face UV, these are like the, the insides of the mouth, and this is a little bit of the neck, I believe. So you need to have a UV. Why do we need a UV? Because the textures that we're gonna be generating are gonna be like projected to that specific UV. And third, you need to know what the target of your specific, specific content is going to be. Is this going to be for uh, like an augmented reality? Is it going to be for a game, like a AAA game? Is it going to be for a commercial, a cinematic? Because all of these questions are important. Not the, all, Even though all of the maps capture the information, they don't do it in the same way. And therefore, we need to know exactly what we need them for, because some of them are more efficient or uh, less resource intensive than others. Now, if all of these things that I'm mentioning sound really, really crazy to you right now, I would like to remind you that you can learn about the basics of 3D with our Intro to Maya course, Intro to Seabrush course, and all of the other courses with Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So let's talk about the maps now. The way we're going to be creating the maps here inside of Seabrush, let's say you only know how to use Seabrush and Maya, and you are not going to be doing bakes inside of Substance or Marmoset. If you only know how to use Seabrush, you can actually get some very nice normal and displacement maps out of here by going into the C plugin and going into the multi-map exporter. This is the little plugin that's going to allow us to bake all of this information down into what we need. So right now on my geometry, I have five levels of subdivisions. The first one is this low poly mesh, which has about 16,000 points. And uh, this one right here has 4.3 million points, quite a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to C plugin, multi-map exporter, and we're going to turn on displacement and normal. Interesting thing here, you're going to see that we don't have bump anymore. Bump is like a really outdated map. It can still be used, but we don't use it as much nowadays, okay? Most of the things are now being taken care of by the normal map. However, I am going to show you how the old bump map used to work. So we have displacement and we have normal. We're also going to be exporting the mesh. I'm doing this at 4K to get the best possible resolution. And there's a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to flip B because Seabrush has the UVs inverted for whatever reason. And if we go to the displacement map, you want to make sure that the target level, again, the map that you're going to be generating for, is the lowest level that you want to be uh, or that you're going to be importing instead of your, of your software, such as Maya. So subdivision level uh, one, smooth UVs. 
32 bit EXR scale one. Okay, all of these things, midpoint, 0.5, all of these things are really, really, really important. And we want to do a 32 bit EXR because in a 32 bit image, you can capture way, way, way more information than a normal like a PNG or JPEG. If you don't know about this or the EXRs, you might want to check the ACES video that I uploaded a couple of days ago uh, because it includes information about a 32 bit image. It's uh, really, really um, informative, I would say. Then we're going to go to normal map and in the normal map, I'm going to turn on tangent, normal map, adaptive, smooth UV and uh, smooth low res normal. So I'm going to turn all of these four things on. Some pipelines might require you to turn certain things on and off, but for me, this one's work really, really well. Once you have this selected, we are going to just go over here, create all maps and it's going to export everything into a file. So let's go into Photoshop. So I don't have Photoshop turn on. I thought I had Photoshop on. Let me open Photoshop real quick. So we can take a look at the textures. This is what you're going to get. You're going to get a material. We don't need this. We're going to get the object because it's the mesh, the, the subdivision level one mesh. And then we have this thing right here, which is our uh, face map. And then we have our normal map. So let's take a look at the normal map first. If I drag and drop the normal map, you're going to see that we have this very interesting effect. As you can see, this is not the most efficient use of our stuff because we're wasting a lot of space. But uh, yeah, it's, it's still here. And the normal map is a really interesting map because it's an RGB map. It's using three channels to capture information. And the normal map is going to allow us to fake detail into the surface of an object without having to subdivide it. And thanks to the fact that we have three different channels, RGMV, the light is going to react properly to these things right here. So usually if you're going to be doing games, be it our augmented reality, virtual reality, or just traditional games, you're more often than not going to be using normal maps. These are like the standard as of the time of this recording for games, normal maps capture pretty much all of the detail without having to increase the topology. Displacement maps, on the other hand, are really interesting because displacement maps, in this case, the Seaver's displacement map will only save the information on the red channel. And it's a black and white image that tells Maya how far or how deep it needs to push vertices, okay? Now, we're actually going to be using this one as our bump map as well because it also has information of what things are higher and what things are lower. Usually, the 0.5, which is your middle point, is do not move the surface. It's, 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 a, it's a simple surface. As it gets wider, you're going to go up. And as it gets darker, you're going to go down. OK, that's the usual way a bump map works. However, the bump map, again, only fakes that effect. It's not going to push or pull the vertices in or out of the geometry. So let's jump into Maya now. And I have here three of these guys. And let's start with the bump geo. So um, if I just like frame this a little bit better and we go to our render and we render this right here is the bump mesh. OK. So this is the low poly mesh, the subdivision level one with a bump map applied to it. And you might be like, whoa, this looks really freaking good, right? Actually, it looks really good. <laughs> Let me make sure that I am using the one that I'm thinking I'm using. I'm pretty sure this is the bump map. Let's go here. Yeah, this is the bump map. Okay, yeah. So even the bump map looks quite, quite nice. It could be the render, but uh, we'll see the difference. We'll, we'll compare all of the three. So this bump map right here is, is letting us know that, hey, like there's supposed to be detail here, but even though I'm not creating that detail, I'm going to show it to you how the little would look. So for fake things such as, let's say, a wooden floor, some cracks on a, like on a wall or some just like very simple surface details that changes only the surface detail and not the silhouette of the character or the object, a bump map is usually good. And bump maps are the lighter maps, like they're the best maps because they only have a single channel black and white information. So they're usually the most efficient. However, they're not going to give you the best result. Let's save a snapshot of this guy right here. Oh, let's delete this one. There we go. And then now I'm going to turn the bump map uh, off and turn on the geo map. Let's go here. And if we turn or if we go out of this and we render now, you're going to see that the normal map looks a little bit different. OK, it's not the exact same thing. It should react better with light. So it should give us a more realistic uh, like representation of how light is hitting the surface of this object. This looks really good, but it looks a little bit fake and a little bit flat, especially here. You can see the shadows don't make a lot of sense because we have a really strong light coming from this side and there's this shadow right here. And this one gives us way, way more realistic shadows and lights, as you can see right there. 
So the bump map is definitely going to give you a more realistic result with your lights because it's going to allow you to capture that information thanks to the three channels. And again, this is the standard that's being used in games because it gives you the most realistic effect. Both of these effects will break though if we get to a specific like angle on the camera where things look really flat because it's going to look like a flat face and then there's like detail coming out of somewhere. So that's not what we want. Now, you can also tell, for instance, on this little like uh, horn that I added or this little like uh, cliff or whatever you want to call it, that we can see it's still quite fragmented. You can see the silhouette of the object. You can tell the, the different like tessellation of the face, like the for different polygons that are making off the face. And this is because not, not even like the bump, neither the bump nor the normal map are actually modifying the geometry. They're just modifying the surface of the object, how the object looks, but it's not modifying the geometry. Now we're gonna go to the final one. I'm gonna show you how to set this ones up in just a second. I just wanna show you the difference first. And this is the displacement. So displacement is the most powerful one because it will actually displace the geometry. It's actually creating more polygons and moving them up and down so that we get the proper effect. So right now, what we're seeing here in the rendering, we're actually seeing the 9 million polygons that were coming from Seabridge because we're subdividing this mesh at the render time. We're adding more polygons and then we're pushing and pulling those polygons to uh, get this result that we're seeing right here. I'm gonna stop it real quick and uh, let me show you how these things are set up. So I'm gonna go to the hypershade and it's super, super simple. If you have an, a, like a, oh, let's go, where is it? This one. So if you have a very basic AI standard surface, you're gonna go down here to the geometry tab and on the bump mapping, you're gonna just click and assign a file texture. And by default, once you do that, you're gonna get this bumped 2D node, which is the basic like Maya bump node that's gonna get all of the information so that you can like properly generate your a bump and uh, normal maps. So if you're using this as a bump map, as you can see here, I'm using the EXR and I'm using uh, the alpha value as a bump map. If you're using it as a bump map, you just leave this as bump and that's fine. And you can control how intense this bump looks. You can see it here on the on the little sphere. If I bring this bump depth to something like 0.1, it's gonna be really, really uh, like soft and, and uh, nice. You can actually combine this with the, the um, with the displacement, which we can do, and I'll show you in just a second. Uh, but yeah, like this is how we would create a basic like bump map, just a very basic black and white image plugged into a bump 2D node and plugged into the normal camera, which is the geometry option right here. This will give us the bump. Now, the second one, which is uh, this one right here. Nope, is it this one? It's this one right here. This is the normal map. So the normal map is a different type of map. And as you're about to see here, the thing that changes is that we move this thing called the tangent space normals. This is telling it, hey, these normals are related to the object. Make sure that you like compute them properly. And this is what we get. Sometimes in certain like engines, you might need to flip the G channel. For instance, I'm doing this right here for mine. I'm flipping the G channel because the normal maps were inverted. There's a difference between a direct X normal map and an OpenGL uh, normal map. If you want me to talk a little bit more about that, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to uh, like uh, just, just explain a little bit further. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now, the one that really needs more setup is the displacement map. That's the that's the tricky one. That's the that's a really complex uh, shape which I believe is this one right here. Nope, is it this one. I should have renamed my uh, files. I always told my students to rename their stuff and I'm not following that advice. Has to be this one then, there we go. So this one, the displacement map does not go on the material. As you can see, it goes into this other block, which is called the shading group, because the displacement map is not modifying the way that the surface looks. It's modifying the way the geometry works. And of course, that's giving us the full um, result at the very end. So the way you create this is very simple. You just tap, and by the way, I have a video about displacement maps if you wanna want check it out. I think it's one of the first ones that you get in Google if you look for Arnold, uh, Seabrush to Arnold displacement. So if you create a displacement shader right here, you can just reconnect this little pin right here to the displacement of the material that you're using. And then you're gonna plug in your image, the out color of your image to the displacement information of that shader. Other than that, there's two more things that are really important. And again, I go over this in the on the um, displacement video. 
on the Arnold options, you need to change the scalar zero value to 0.5. This is telling um, Arnold that a gray, 50% uh, gray is the neutral state of a, of a vertice. And as you go towards the whites, it's going to go up. And as you go towards the blacks, it's going to go down. So very important 0.5 right there. And the other important factor, really, really important, is on the geometry itself, you need to go to the shape group and down here to the Arnold section, you need to go to subdivisions and activate the same number of divisions that you had in ZBrush. So as you can see here, we're gonna use Catmull Clark subdivisions. And if we have five subdivision levels in ZBrush and we wanna get the exact same result, we need to push the iterations to five so that when it's the render time, this thing's gonna be smoothed five times until it gets to nine million polygons. And then it's gonna displace all of the elements. When you do that, you get this displacement right here, which is the final uh, result of the um, well of the of the little character right here. So as I mentioned, we can actually combine things, and this is like the final bonus. If you've uh, if you've been watching until the end of the video, let me know in the comments. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to grab this a normal camera, and we can just grab like a very basic bump to denote, which is the same one that we normally use. Get this into the normal camera. And then I'm going to grab the same EXR and plug it right here. But as you can see, we can't do that. Why? Because the out color is an RGB. We actually just need the R, which is the, the, the black channel. And then if we render now, whoop, if we render now, let me actually, let me say real quick before anything bad happens. I'm also going to go to system and I'm going to change. Oh, we're already in GPU. I thought we were not. So let's render real quick. And what should happen is that we now have a, like an extra layer of bumpiness thanks to the bump map, okay? I'm gonna save this image so that we can compare. Let's go back to the hyper shade. Ooh. Here, let's disconnect the pin for just a second. And if we render again, this is without the bump map, okay? So let's stop. And we can compare. This is displacement with normal map, or with, sorry, with bump map, and this is displacement without bump map. So as you can see, it really helps. It, it helps us push things a little bit better. So it's always a good idea when you're using displacement to just plug in the bump map as well so that you get the best possible result. Normally, I would not recommend using the bump map for anything. Like if you're going to do something that's performance uh, optimized or something, just a normal map. Just go for a normal map. You don't need the bump map. If you're going to do displacement, though, you could add like that extra little punch with the bump to get an extra effect right there. If this is too much, remember, we still have this lighter in the bump node that we can lower to like a 0.5 or like a 0.3 and we can toggle how intense we want this to uh to be and um yeah that's pretty much it guys hopefully with this video the like very uh, uh foggy uh aspects of like the maps and why they're important and how they're being used has now been uh, solved hopefully this video is useful to a lot of you guys and if it has been useful i would appreciate a like a share a subscription or maybe even a little hitting the little bell icon it really helps the channel now before we go i just want to remind you a couple of things on monday we're gonna have our live stream 9 a.m uh, mexico time 9 uh, 8 30 p.m india time it's a festive or a festive day here in mexico it's the constitution day so there's not going to be any work so i might be able to go a little bit longer than usual like maybe two hours uh so make sure to tune in you can hit the little bell to get notified when, when the live stream starts and the, other than that next week and the weekend of next week we are going to have our portfolio review so if you want to submit your works or your works in progress for me to uh take a look at you're free to go down here to the description there's going to be a google drive a portfolio and you can drop your stuff right there uh, finally, I just want to remind you that we have our uh, creature contest open. The submissions are going to be open after the portfolio review. So after next week, we'll close portfolio submissions and we'll open the submissions for the little uh, creature creation contest that we're doing. If you haven't seen that, go back a couple of videos. We've been working on that one for a couple of uh, weeks now, and uh, it's due on the 28th of uh, February. And that's it. Have a good weekend, my friends. Uh, have a great day, and I'll see you back on Monday with more 3D stuff. Thank you very much, and... I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.